February of 1969, the contract for the F-14 was signed. Today, two squadrons of F-14s aboard the Enterprise, which is deployed to join the Pacific Fleet. I'm Rear Admiral John Alvis, the Navy's F-14 program manager, and this is the seventh of the F-14 progress report. While deployment of the F-14 is the big story of this report, there are other things happening in the program that, while not as dramatic, are equally as important in the life of the world's most advanced air superiority fighter. One important item is production. Aircraft number 96 has been delivered to the Navy. Numbers 97 through 103 are in flight status, are flight preparation for pre-delivery testing at the Navy Grumman facility at Calverton, New York. Aircraft numbers 104 through 122 are in final assembly at the production facility. The wing center section, the longest lead time item, for aircraft number 170 is in the production fixture. At Point Magoo in California, there have been little heralded programs that deserve attention. These are the UP-1 and UP-2 programs that translated Navy desired changes in already delivered aircraft to reality in record time. Some 30 improvements went from idea to completed design to completed installation on 24 aircraft in five months, well in time to meet the deployment schedule. Classically, in a fighter development program, some 20 aircraft are used exclusively in the research, development, and technical evaluation processes by the Navy. In the Tomcat program, this is a different story. In order to maximize its F-14 assets, the Navy is taking those R&D aircraft that have completed their programs and is turning them into fleet operational systems at the Naval Air Rework Facility at Norfolk, Virginia. In addition to this program, the Navy is examining the feasibility of converting some of the pre-production airplanes into fleet trainers. We in the Navy feel that all F-14 aircraft should be where they belong, with the fleet. This time period also saw the establishment of the Two Coast Tomcat. On July 26th of this year, the first of Squadron BF-14 and BF-32's aircraft arrived at Naval Air Station, Oceana, Virginia, to be met with appropriate ceremonies. These two fighter squadrons were deployed on the USS Kennedy in mid-1975. Marines are also preparing to transition into the F-14 in preparation to receiving the first aircraft in the latter part of 1975. After transitioning, the Marine Squadron, BMFA-213, will be based at Beaufort, South Carolina. Production of the F-14 to Iran is gaining momentum. With January 1976 as the target date, bases are being prepared at Isfahan, Shiraz, and at Mirabad, the military and commercial airport for Tehran. In the area of training, lead Iranian flight instructor crews have completed their F-14 familiarization flight. However, Training is a two-way street, so lead Grumman instructor air crews are on site in Iran, flying and studying with the Imperial Iranian Air Force. Even as the Iranian government was indicating its desire to increase its F-14 commitment by 50 airplanes, bringing the total by to 80, the first long lead manufacturing and training items were being introduced to the fabrication cycle. Prior to fleet deployment, the last of the residual ground tests were completed at Lakehurst Naval Air Test Facility in New Jersey. One of the ground test aircraft, static aircraft number one, weighing in at over 45,000 pounds, was sent hurling down the track at a terminal speed of 102 knots. 
into a carrier barricade stretched across the runway. Shown here in extreme slow motion, the airframe took the barrier with no structural damage other than the loss of a piso tube or two and a landing gear door. On the west coast, there was another kind of testing going on. Air crews of BF-1 and BF-2 and those of BF-14 and BF-32 were putting the Tomcat through its paces in the rigorous air combat maneuvering environment. Complete acceptance of the aircraft in terms of training, maintenance, and tactical operations has been exceptionally good. The F-14s are continually being used to the full extent of their flight envelopes. As the Tomcat goes to sea, the fleet is ready to receive it. I would like to introduce Vice Admiral Bob Baldwin, Commander Naval Air Force Pacific Fleet, to tell you about the F-14 operational readiness evaluation and deployment to the Pacific. It has been just five years and nine months from contract signing, and now the first two squadrons of F-14s are deployed. They are prepared, as attested to by their recent successful completion of an operational readiness exercise. August of this year saw the beginning of this last pre-deployment exercise in USS Enterprise. At full strength, with 12 aircraft each, fighter squadrons one and two operated with other elements of the full carrier air wing, including E-2s, EA-6s, A-6s, and A-7s. Reliability and availability were outstanding. Every sortie scheduled was completed, and the reliability of both airframes and systems was such that add-on sorties were scheduled and completed. The F-14, with all its components, the Phoenix missile system, the M-61 gun, the Sidewinder and Sparrow missiles, went through the entire gamut of operations, from raising the missiles through the armament elevator and utilizing the gun loader on the flight deck to expending the armament in the air. These and the 1,001 components that must harmonize to make the Tomcat a weapon system function well. After an outstanding operational readiness evaluation, the Tomcat was ready to deploy. In this and earlier exercises, the Phoenix missile system was employed against the most demanding threats facing the fleet. Firings were successful against targets simulating the high-speed, high-altitude fighter Foxbat, the Backfire, a supersonic bomber, cruise missiles, and multiple bomber or missile raids. Sparrows and Sidewinders were also successfully fired in training missions against air targets. Tomcat is operational. It is effective with its weapons and it is on station with the 7th Fleet. To the flight and maintenance crews of VF-1 and 2 and VF-124, the replacement training squadron, we say well done and welcome aboard for full fleet employment.